All right, without further ado, everybody, I wanted to welcome everybody in. Thank you for joining me live tonight on Twitch. Uh, it's an honor to have, wow, 64 of you here. It's a nice big group, so welcome in. Uh, I'm Aaron, for those who don't know me, of course. I go by Aaron Bun Paints on here on Twitch, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, everywhere on the internet. Aaron Bun Paints is where you can find me. And I teach uh, painting tutorials here and there. About once a month, I do a free painting tutorial step-by-step -step here on Twitch, and then I upload it to my YouTube channel channel for those to enjoy after the live airing. Uh, I also stream here on Twitch multiple times a week just doing other artistic content. I might be just painting a commission painting or a painting for myself. I do some cooking, I do some gaming, just anything that's like fun for me and entertaining for others. So that's a little bit about what I do, but I know you're all here for a step-by-step -step tutorial tonight and uh, that's what we're doing. We'll be uh, painting this lovely design here. So this design is a little bit different and special because it's going to be using two canvases, not just one but two munchkins thank you for the follow and hello uh, so you can see it kind of in the photo but i'll show you in person here they separate wow so a really cool design when you hang them up you can hang them nice and close together or a little bit gapped and it kind of just looks like you can see the design continues onto each side and the idea behind this was to maybe have two people painting this if you want you know one side for yourself one side for your partner you can do that or if you want to paint this all yourself that's what i'll be doing i'll be painting two canvases myself uh, you're welcome to do that too so what i'm going to do is actually paint this along with you you'll be able to see the original up here where my mouse is moving on the screen the whole time so you can kind of see the reference uh, but I'll kind of recreate it with you step by step on my own blank canvases. Munchkins thank you very much thank you and AJ welcome to the chat from Australia hello I'm in Canada so that's very exciting all the way across the world welcome in AJ Voss um, if anyone else feels like sharing where they're from I'm always curious where everybody in the world is so feel free to throw that in chat if you're comfortable and if you want to say uh, yeah, the event should last about two hours. I try and keep it about two hours long. So by about 9 p.m. EST, we should be uh, wrapping up a little bit. And uh, in terms of materials, I always list those beforehand as well. But just in case anyone's kind of gathering things right now or wants to double check, I'll let you know what the materials are. So I always use five different paint colors. I always use red, yellow, phthalo blue specifically <laughs> and then black and white and then any of the other colors you see here I'll just teach you how to mix because we have the three primary colors we can make all the nice in between like purples greens oranges things like that in terms of paint brushes I'll show you my paint brushes I have this large flat one here I have this more medium sized kind of round one so all the bristles come to a nice little point and then I have a nice teeny tiny one as well just for nice little details so I'll be using all three of these if you have any just like random combination of these or kind of like different shapes and different sizes of brushes that should be totally fine you don't need the exact sizes and shapes I do as long as you just have somewhat of a variety that'll be good uh, and then paint water it's always good to have I just have a yogurt cup of paint water nothing fancy Hopefully you have a paint palette as well. You can use pretty much anything. Uh, you don't need a fancy palette from the store. You could just use a paper plate as I do. In fact, I use the same paper plate every single time. This is a year and a half's worth of paint. Uh, acrylic paint dries very nicely, so you can just stack new paint on top of the old paint and get this solid disc that I have. <laughs> Eventual volcano. Eventually it kind of turns into a volcano shape if we use it for five years as I've done before. Uh, and that's pretty much it for materials. Oh, and then hopefully you're wearing something that you don't mind getting paint on because acrylic paint is not really known to stain, but it can stain. So just want to make sure you're not wearing like your favorite shirt or something. Or of course you can wear an apron or something like that to kind of cover up. Oh, thanks. Yes. And all the materials are actually listed in the chat right now. So if you're curious about the exact brands I use, uh, you can always kind of copy paste things and look them up uh, locally from you. Oh, Munchkin's good to know. Good from Canada as well. Um, and I think that's about it. I don't really say anything else in my intro, so uh, let's get to painting. We're gonna do a quick little toast and then we'll paint. All right, so let me replace this with my canvases here and then we can begin. I'll talk a little bit first about how I'm going to do this because I've actually had quite a few questions about how I instruct two paintings at once, which is an absolutely fair question. How the heck do I do it? So what I'll be doing is I'll kind of be instructing uh, the left canvas and then the right canvas and the left canvas and the right canvas. Jules, welcome in. Thank you for subscribing. We're just starting our tutorial. Perfect timing. Thank you for subscribing though. Welcome in. I'll chat with you in a minute. 
and Noxy Jen, hello as well. Thanks for following. So yeah, I would, if you're painting with somebody else, I would of course choose whether you want the left-hand side or right-hand side and kind of keep on that, unless you're doing any fun switching games halfway through, you can always do that as well. Uh, and yeah, you can see, of course, the original over here. The left-hand side will be a little more cool tone. So if you like the blues, the greens, the turquoises, the purples a little bit, uh, I would stick to the left-hand side. If you like the warmer colors, kind of like the pinks, the oranges, the yellows, and again, maybe a little purple and green in there too, I would stick to the right-hand side. It's kind of like cool tones versus warmer tones today. But again, the way I'll instruct is kind of left first, right second, back forth, back forth. Uh, you might find if you're painting alone tonight, you might find me going a little quick back and forth, but I'll always leave lots of time after I instruct a couple steps here. So after I instruct one step for the left, one step for the right, I'll give lots of time for either both people to paint or one person to paint. Because I got to keep in mind I'm one person too and I'm just painting alone, so I'm going to need some time to <laughs> catch up myself as well. All right, so with that being said, let's uh, let's really get into it here. So for the left-hand side and for the right-hand side, I will be starting with my large flat brush. And again, I'll start by chatting with the left-hand side first. So left-hand side, we'll be making kind of some blue tones. We'll be making some light blues, some dark blues, some turquoises. So what I'd love for you to do is on your plate, if you haven't poured any paint yet, you can pour some blue, some white, some yellow, so we'll be using all those colors to kind of mix around and create some different shades of blue. If you have all five colors on your canvas already, that's totally fine as well. But I'll be mainly using lots of blue, little bits of white, little bits of yellow. Got a little clog in my, oh, in my yellow there. There we go. And again, the large flat brush to begin. So I always like to dip my brush in the water first, just a basic little step dipping in the water, maybe tapping off on a paper towel a little bit. And then I'm going to go to my uh, palette here and I'm going to mix together uh, a little bit of blue. Uh, blue and white specifically. I'm going to start by just doing kind of like a, not super light blue, just something a little lighter than the blue that came out of the bottle here. So just grabbing a little bit of white, mixing it into a big pile of blue here. Sounds good, Christy, I'll see you later. Jen, no worries, I'm glad you're here. Now that you're in chat, if you have any questions throughout the painting event, feel free to stick them in chat. I'll be doing my best to instruct and watch the chat at the same time. All right, so I've got this blue again. It's not a light blue, it's just a little lighter than what I had come out of the bottle because it's a very dark blue to begin with. And I'm going to start just by doing some nice big kind of curved strokes here, some nice little swoops, if you will, just kind of swooping from up to down, down to up, kind of going back and forth a little bit. You'll notice in the design, this left-hand canvas here kind of swoops down to the right. The right canvas will swoop down to the left and will kind of meet in the middle. So left-hand canvas, you're starting with some brush strokes that swoop down to the left. And I'm just starting, you can see, kind of in this top right-hand area, moving maybe a little bit over more to the middle. I'm just going to keep this a little higher up here. You can see how in the original we have some darkness kind of in the top, the darker blues will get lighter as we go down. So left-hand uh, left hand side, excuse me, you can start with that. And as you're painting on your blue right-hand side, I'm going to start you off with some nice bright pinks. So right-hand side, you can grab your large flat brush. You can dip in the water, tap on a paper towel, and you can go to your plate and mix together lots of red with just a little bit of white. The white's going to turn it a little more pink rather than a pure red. And that's going to create a nice like dark hot pink kind of for the top area. So again, just mixing a little bit of white into a large pile of red. So similar to the other side, just using red instead of blue this time. You can see how it's creating a little bit more of a pink rather than a red. We have the red here, we got pink here. And right hand side, you can start by swooping some pink like this. So we're swooping kind of the other way. We're going from top right down to the left. We're kind of coming to the edge of the canvas just like blue did. Creating all these lovely strokes. 
And same thing, I'm gonna keep you kind of up in the top area here. We're not gonna bring this too far down. We wanna leave lots of room for our oranges, for our yellows, kind of our lighter warm colors. For now, we're sticking to very bright ones. So you can continue to add that pink. And for both sides, I'll kind of point out here, if you're using canvases like me that are wrapped, you can continue the painting up to the top. Don't forget about that little edge. It's important. It's a nice little canvas up here. You can paint it as well. So don't forget to kind of curl the color over and around onto the other side, be it the top, the side, the bottom, whatever it is you're touching. Feel free to cover the whole thing. It's just extra painting area to kind of fill up. All right, I'm gonna move back over to the left-hand side. I just wanna teach uh, one more step for each side and then I'll give lots of time for you to play around. So for those who are maybe feeling a little rushed already, don't worry, I will slow it right down after this. We just gotta move a little quick to begin with because we're going to do some blending. Blending involves using a wet paint color on the canvas and then applying a second paint color and kind of moving it around into the previous one. So we gotta make sure that we're um, moving a little bit quick just for those blending phases. So left hand side here, after you've applied a few strokes of this kind of like darker blue, we're going to go back to our palette. We're going to make a really nice light, light blue. So we're really adding lots of white this time using maybe just a little bit of blue, creating a really nice sky blue. Something super, super light when compared to your previous blue. So similar color, just different shade. We're still in the blue, but we're doing a really light blue. And what you do with that is you can apply it to your canvas. You can see I'm starting by applying it kind of in the gaps, like in between on my other strokes here. Maybe I'm gonna move a little further over, cover up some more space. That's okay if a little jiggly happens, that's all right. That happens sometimes. And as I apply this color, I'm going to move my brush kind of in between the two colors as well. So I'm kind of allowing my brush to pick up a little bit of the darker blue, move it into the light blue, and just allow everything to blend together. It's a really nice, satisfying feeling, nice and smooth. And again, as long as your two paint colors are wet, you can continue to do this. So you can keep adding some paint color, you can keep blending. If you need to re-add paint color, that's okay too. Maybe we go back into the dark blue, for example, the darker blue, I should say, and kind of re-add. Maybe it got a little eaten up by our light blue. You can keep adding more paint and just kind of blending along however you like. If you really love blue, you can kind of continue down further. I'll maybe continue down a little bit further. But again, I wanna leave some room for some different colors. We're gonna move into some turquoises next. We'll do some greens later. And for those wondering, yes, you can come right to the edge. If you want, and if your partner allows it, if you're working with somebody else, you can even go a little into theirs, just a little. If your partner allows, always ask permission first. It's a little scary having somebody just come right onto your painting like that, so. <laughs> knock, knock, can I come over? Yes, all right, a little bit of blue. Cause that's what's going to help kind of connect things. We'll use other colors to connect as well but you can always use the colors you're using and kind of move them just a little back and forth to help with some connections there. Can we watch this as a replay? Yes, Kazook, absolutely. So what I do is after some time, maybe in the next week or so, I'm going to upload this to my YouTube channel. If you type exclamation point YouTube, all one word into the chat, you can see a link to my YouTube channel. And otherwise, if you're familiar with Twitch, you can always come back here after this is done airing and it will be a video uh, viewable immediately. So before I upload it to YouTube, you can always come back here, absolutely. <laughs> knock, knock, nobody's home. <laughs> Were you denied permission or are you painting on your own, Stephanie? <laughs> because I'm painting on my own, I can always just bust in the door. <laughs> I don't even need to knock. Hello, Forrest. We tune it up, yes. Doing a nice double painting today, welcome in. Oh, thank you, Ali, for answering. See, just as I said, sometimes people are quicker than me at answering in the chat. They're all trustworthy, you can trust them all. <laughs> I'll keep my eye, <laughs> keep my eye out to make sure they're all trusted, but yes. Anyone who's regular here, 
um, knows all my links, knows these answers, and they might help you out even quicker than I do. So there you go. Thank you. Grok actually linked it there for you. Yes. Ah, oh, with my mom. So she didn't answer. <laughs> or she denied. She said, nobody's home, I'm sorry. No, I don't want the product you're selling. Please go away. Politely, yes. All right, so this is blue. It's kind of, you can see, starting to streak up a little bit. So I'm gonna move over to the other side just to chat with the right-hand canvas now, because I'm sure you're all eager. Like, what are we gonna do? You're doing a very similar thing just with your colors. So you started with a nice hot pink. If you're ready to move on to the blending stage, you can now mix a light pink together. So I'm just grabbing lots of white, moving it into my red area or to my previous pink, that's fine too. And I'm just lightening it up. Grabbing a nice, very, very light pink now. And it's the same thing. I'm just gonna stroke that kind of in between some things, maybe around my other streaks as well. And then I'll start to blend them together. So again, blending just by moving your brush in between those two colors, in between the light pink and the dark pink. You can see what it does is it slowly smooths it out. Start to get into that nice streaky, streaky look that we have in the original. I'll say again as well to you, the right hand side, you can always re-add some colors. So if you want to go back to your hot pink, if maybe the light pink kind of aided up a little bit, you can just add in hot pink as much as you like. And again, as long as both paint colors are wet, you can blend as much or as little as you like. I love the streakiness of this painting. So you can see I really like to do lots of little stripes, lots of blending in here just moving my colors into one another. <laughs> Lunchbox lady, hello, cool beans. <laughs> nice to see you, welcome in. <laughs> Can't trust all of you, correct. Edna, hi, my first time here, I'm from Quebec, welcome in. Uh, the other side of the river facing Ottawa, very cool. We have quite a few people uh, from your general area. Quite a few people have already said they're, uh, they're from the province and I know some who are in your general vicinity, so. You got some local friends here too, but welcome in from another fellow Canadian. Oh, Cindy, that's so sweet. Cindy's reminding everybody, don't forget, don't be stressed or overwhelmed. Trust the process. It'll turn out. It's your painting. There's no right or wrong. She's so right. I know the goal is always, of course, to make it similar to mine. Of course, you're following along because you liked my design. S. Dodgens, welcome in. Hello. And Eric, welcome in as well. It's good to see you. Feel free to join on the chat or just enjoy the painting process. But yeah, Cindy was kind of getting at the fact that all paintings are different. They're always gonna be a little different. This one will be different than my original that I painted just a, a few weeks ago, right? They're always going to be a little bit different. So if you see differences in your painting, don't panic. It's truly just what makes it your painting. If there are questions about like techniques, of course, or you feel like you're not understanding something, of course, I'm happy to help you, but embrace those little changes. It's what makes your painting yours. If they were all the exact same, there wouldn't be fun in it, right? So again, all I'm doing still is just blending. I'm just continuing to add light pinks and dark pinks and blending together. Uh, what we'll be doing next, everybody, is we will be kind of moving in between here. Right now we have a very harsh blue, harsh pink. We want to start to move these together in our next steps to kind of combine them so we can really allow the canvases to kind of interact with the different pink colors. So just so you know, that's starting to come up. If I didn't say a pink side as well, ask your partner, can I move over a bit? Can I add some little pink streaks, please? Knock, knock. Just add some in there. We'll start to blend those out after. <laughs> the moose hurts. See, there's a lot of Canadians in here. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Lunchbox lady, we're new. My darling army daughter is in Germany and I'm in North Dakota. Oh my gosh, wait. I think we just heard from her earlier, right? We're doing this for my birthday. So cool. So cool. That was Panda, right? I believe. Happy birthday to you then. Again, so cool to hear that some of you are doing this from a distance. I was really wondering if people would do that. And I think that's just extra cool. If we can't be together, we can still really paint together. You can still communicate about your colors and try and match things up the best you can. And then when you meet up again, you can see if they fit together nicely. I think it's such a cool idea. Isn't it sweet? Yeah, Jen. <laughs> Canvas stealing, yeah. <laughs> mine now, <laughs> both are mine. <laughs> Noxie Jen from North Carolina. There's a lot of, <laughs> why is North Carolina, Carolina such a hot spot as well? There's a lot of you from that state. Many neighbors, many neighbors. 
Yeah, that's the fun thing about coming to this Twitch chat, Lunchbox Lady, during your birthday. You'll get so many happy birthdays. When people learn it's your birthday, they're like, happy birthday. You'll get all of the happy birthdays from the whole chat. You're in Ohio? Okay, good to know. Yes, lots around America as well. We should almost have like a map and start to mark off all the countries and all the states and try and get the whole finished map. I think that would be fun. Each time we learn a location, we go, all right, we got someone from there. Never Munchkins, oh, where would you go if you could go? Do you have any plans for eventual travel? <laughs> right? Yes, yeah, so many gens. <laughs> Bracket N. <laughs> All right, I'll give another minute or two just in case anyone's still playing with their colors. I know even the first couple steps there, especially those new to painting, you might want a little extra time to keep adding. So again, if you're enjoying blending, just keep adding a little bit more of your colors so that you can keep them nice and fresh. If you try and continue to blend with just the colors on your canvas at this point, it might become a little bit sticky. You might not have things blending quite as smooth as before. So again, just keep adding a little bit of paint. In fact, it's a good idea to add a little extra paint even right now if you're done, because we will be doing some blending right in the middle next. So it'll help to have some fresh pink and fresh blue so that we can blend our eventual purple into those colors. So again, even if you're happy with what you have, I would just reapply a little bit of color, <clears throat> especially to the inside edge here, just so we have some fresh paint to work with in the next couple minutes. <clears throat> Oh, is it in Thailand? I'd recommend Thailand. It's a beautiful space. <clears throat> oh no, Munchkins? Oh, I've done a lot of traveling in America. I think it's beautiful. There's lots of very unique places from state to state. But yeah, to each their own. <clears throat> Australia's on my bucket list. Me too, I've never been as well. I'd love to spend like a longer period of time there as well. That's another spot that uh, I feel like you want to kind of live for maybe a month or two at least to really get to see the entire area. <laughs> Look at that, it's South Carolina too. It's the Carolinas in general. That's Dodgins. <laughs> Grok, mine too. <laughs> of course, of course. So again, all I'm doing everybody, I'm just re-adding the same colors here just to freshen them up a bit before our next uh, next step. <clears throat> oh yes, I've heard of South Korea for your list, uh, Cindy. Me too, me too. We got another Ohio, Kazook. Very cool. I <laughs> see so you don't count that. Yeah, hard to if you don't remember, huh? Mm-hmm. No rocks in this one, Charlene. We're safe. <laughs> no rocks in this painting. You're good. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little more pink and then we can move officially along to the next step. Just wanna freshen up my paint colors here. <clears throat> Working on two canvases at once is a little bit of a challenge when it's speedy like this, but absolutely doable. So anyone who's in my situation, you go. I'm cheering you on from over here because I know how it feels working on the two at the same time. It's a little tougher, but again, doable. And again, you can take your time and always kind of re-ask questions, re-watch if you need to, but anyway. <laughs> Jen, my kitchen and bedroom are my bucket list for tonight. <laughs> Lovely destinations. Have never been. <laughs> That's funny. All right, everybody. So our next step is going to be kind of combining these two color areas because right now they look pretty separate, right? We have kind of the blue area, the pink area, not much else going on unless you really intruded on your partner's canvas, right? Grateful, welcome in and thanks for following. So if you look at the original, you can see the color I used to kind of combine these two areas is purple. And purple is the perfect color because to make purple, we actually want to mix together blue and red. So perfect. We're just going to literally use the two colors we used, make some purple and blend them in kind of right in the middle here. So both sides will be streaking in some purple. Hey, Jen, thank you for following officially. Thank you very much. Hello, many Jens in chat. Uh, yeah, using purple and kind of stroking just slowly on either side, kind of blending into our blue and blending into our pink here. So both sides can now make a nice purple or you can make one purple and share if you'd like to. <laughs> Many ways to do it. You can make your own or share. Uh, on my palette, I'm just mixing together blue and red as promised here. 
and it'll appear very dark. You can see it starts very, very dark. It almost looks black on my screen, but it is a dark purple, I promise. And the way to make it lighter is simply to grab your white, stick it in, stick it on top, mix it in. You can see it turns into more of a nice light purple. That's what I'm going for. It's not like light purple. It's not super dark. It's just somewhere in between. I just like to lighten it up a little bit here. Something just a little brighter than our super deep purple we started with. So something more like that. Okay. And again, both sides, you're going to streak on just a little purple. I would recommend just doing some small little streaks to begin with. I'm starting from the inside edge and moving kind of up and out like this. Kind of following my blue. Pink, same thing. You can grab some purple. You can even kind of match up with your partner if you want with your streaks. And you're just blending kind of up and into your pink. And personally, what I like to do is kind of apply the color first. You can see I'm kind of getting rid of all the paint from my paintbrush. And then when I've applied the color, I wash off my brush. I use a relatively clean brush and I just swipe a little bit more. You can see what happens is it kind of softens up the colors a little bit. It blends them a little bit nicer without adding more purple. Because of course we want to keep this ni nice pink going as well. Hey Jen, oh my gosh, thank you for the cheer. Thank you so much. For those who don't know, cheering is um, essentially kind of like contributing to me financially. Uh, bits are what are used for cheering. Bits are like Twitch currency. Jen gave me a hundred bits, which is $1. So thank you, Jen. That's very sweet of you. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Why red alert paint on my coffee? It happens. <laughs> you better get used to what I'm telling you. That's why we have the tea emote with the um, with the paintbrush in there. <laughs> oh, just Kim for you. Gotcha. I'll try and switch that over from Kazook. Gotcha. I'll try for Kim. Looks almost like magenta. Yeah, you'll get some lovely like in-between colors here if you're talking about the bright pink for sure. Kind of like a magenta. But yeah, all this blending is going to get you all these lovely in-between colors. You'll get some like purpley blues, purpley pinks, everything in between. So again, both sides, you can continue to add just small amounts of purple and blend. I'll say again as well, if you need to go back to other colors, if you want to like move the purple back more into the middle, if it's kind of intruding a little too much on your canvas, you can go back with blue or pink, whatever color you need, and you can start to add more to help kind of dilute the purple a little bit. That's what a lot of this painting is. You're just kind of adding color, moving it around, re-adding color if you need to, and allowing it to all blend nicely. <laughs> but yeah, Stephanie, I can absolutely relate. Uh, does heavy body paint dry slower than craft paint? I'm using craft paint. Um, dry slower. I wouldn't say so unless you're using more of the paint, Noxygen. I've never really had um, a huge difference when I've been using heavier body, body paint with drying time unless I'm really caking it on. So if I'm really like scooping up lots of paint, putting a big pile on, then yeah, it's going to take a little longer. But if you're using it the same way, from my experience, I haven't seen much difference personally. <clears throat> Mine always dries very slow. Oh, that is true. Cindy has mentioned this too. It could be the quality for sure. It's hard for me to comment because I've been so stuck on the same brand for a long time. <laughs> I use a very uh, liquidy um, academic acrylic. So it's meant for like schools and stuff for kind of beginner artists, but I use it anyway. <laughs> I just use it because it comes in these huge bottles, right? And I paint a lot. So this is very... Uh, I'm a little more friendly on my wallet to just get two liters of paint at a time for like $20 and call it a day. But yeah, that could contribute like just naturally because it's a thicker paint. Maybe you have a little bit more on there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Panda, if I can help you at all, let me know. You can always fix things just by adding more color going on top or blending out. But if there's anything specific, totally let me know and I can try my best to help you. Lala, hello, I'm finally in Twitch and have no visual. Um, you wanna try maybe refreshing the page? I'm not sure if you can hear me at all. I'll type in the chat for you and see if that helps. Try refreshing. All right, so again, just that purple still. I'll give another minute or two for everyone to continue to add the purple. If you wanna even bring it down a little bit more, you can as well. 
Again, a lot of this is up to you. If you want to have more purple, more blue, or less blue, or less purple, more or less pink, that's all up to you. I guess sticking to the original, maybe we bring the blue a little bit further down. So if we're wanting to stick to the original design, I'm going to move this down a little more. But again, if you'd rather leave more room for different colors, you can absolutely leave it a little higher up. I'm just always doing my best to match what I originally created, so I'm going to bring this down just a wee bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chad, I'm so glad. Is this, uh, sorry, I don't know if I missed it. Was this your first time doing this? Like any painting tutorial, more is what I'm asking rather than Twitch with me. Ah, Jen's asking too. <laughs> Nadine, I'm glad. It always makes me happy to hear, because I know, again, sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes we get stressed out about painting a little bit. Again, we want to create something that we're proud of and want to show off, and sometimes it doesn't turn out the way we imagined, but sometimes it's even better. Sometimes it's different and not what you were expecting, and I'm just glad that people are able to uh, just relax and, you know, maybe more so just think of the process of painting rather than the end result, especially this painting. We can do lots of just nice soft blending moving the brush back and forth, feeling the paint as you go. I'm just glad you're getting any sort of enjoyment. Yes, exactly. Blending is great. <laughs> I could blend all day. <laughs> just move paint in between each other. Keep it wet. So nice. What was the... Oh, I need to remember now. Was it Kim? Was that right? I'm going to scroll up to figure it out. Just Kim. That's right. Yes. Going to have to go here in a few. No worries at all. Love this painting. Love your teaching. You're absolutely fine, Kim. Yeah, if you got to go, that's fine. If you're interested in painting this another time, again, I'll upload it to YouTube for you. But I'm glad you enjoyed either way. Have a nice evening if you got to go in a few. But enjoy the last few minutes here. Been to a live one long ago pre-COVID. Oh, okay, Jen, I see you. Yep, I used to do those. I used to teach uh, in bars and restaurants and like public spaces for groups of like 30, 40 people. And yeah, with COVID, that kind of changed, didn't it? I immediately moved online because I very quickly learned we can't be doing that anymore right now anyway. So yeah, so I'm happy being online and kind of staying safe inside, but still able to reach a lot of people. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, shout out to Lee again. <laughs> Nadine, I'm glad you're having fun. I'm hoping Lee has fun too. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I don't know how to do that. Uh, refreshing the internet page. Pop up with your window. The little circle arrow. We can try that. Hopefully that helps. All right, so assuming we're good with the purple in between here, let's move on a little further down our canvas. <laughs> shout out to Lee. Lee, you're getting so many shout outs in chat. So on the left hand side, we can see we can kind of continue with our blues. I would say we get a little bit lighter, maybe a dark streak here and there, but mostly we're going down into some nice turquoisey colors. So kind of like color of the ocean, just those beautiful like bluish greens. We leave the green for down here later, but yeah, turquoisey first. All right. So blue side, or I guess left side, we'll be doing turquoise next. Um, right hand side, pink side, we'll be doing orange next, just as a heads up. I'll talk to you in a second though. So left hand side, let's use the same brush we were just using. I would wash it off though, just to be a little cleaner here. No more purple on the brush, hopefully. And we can go back to our palette. We can mix a nice turquoise. I'm gonna need a little more white. Uh, we can start by mixing two colors and then we're going to add a third. So the two colors we're starting with are blue and white again. Staying very consistent with the blues and whites. So blue and white, I would say about half, half. Again, we're not going for something super dark, but also not super light, just something in between, something nice and bright. <laughs> Great, nice to see you. Thank you for answering. Gator Girl, I think she was answering your question. Upload to finish. No worries, yes. We will be uh, exactly as gray. If you look at gray 3003's message, thank you, gray. I'll be uploading this to YouTube and you can also access it on Twitch before I upload it to YouTube if you're really excited to paint it maybe tomorrow, for example, because I do take a little bit of time to upload it to YouTube. <laughs> Thanks everyone, he's blushing. <laughs> All right, so this light blue, again, the left side has created this like lighter blue, I guess I should say. We're going to add a little bit of yellow to it. And I want to say just a little bit of yellow because if you add too much yellow, it's going to turn very, very bright green. 
We want it more of like a turquoise. We want the nice transition from blue to turquoise to green eventually. So for now, just a little bit of yellow in there to make a nice turquoise. It'll look like just as it is a bluish green. <laughs> Jen, I'm gonna leave more room for my favorite color green. That's the beauty of this is you can change whatever you want. You can just put a little turquoise on if you want. So I'm starting the same as usual. I'm going to start by applying this turquoise here. And I am trying to blend it a little into the blue above it. So you can see I'm moving my brush again back and forth in between this new turquoise and the old blue. And mine is blending because my blue is still a little bit wet. But if yours isn't blending, again, it might just be that the blue is a little dry because again, acrylic paint does dry a little fast here and there. So. You can always reapply blue if you need it, just in the spot where you need to blend. You don't need to reapply everywhere, of course. Just reapply it right where it's touching the turquoise and that'll help smooth it all out. So I'm starting with that. You can see just a nice, I would say medium turquoise, not too dark, not too light. I'm bringing it down, not quite to the bottom, but almost. So again, kind of streaking it and I'll add some more streaks in a little bit later. Just moving over to the right hand side, not to leave you hanging right hand side, we're going to move on to some oranges for you. So we can see we have a little bit of orange kind of peeking in just in the middle here and eventually we'll get down to yellow. So for orange, we can take our large flat brush, same as the one we were using before, you can give it a quick wash. And we're going to mix together red and yellow to begin with. And then I do like to lighten up the orange, so I will add some white. But first, we're just doing red and yellow. That's kind of a more traditional, common orange there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Kim says, I have used the golden liquid and it keeps it wet longer. Oh, okay. Do you mean the golden brand of paint? Or maybe there's like an additive, I guess, to it. Because I know there are different um, kind of liquids and other products you can add to acrylic to keep it wet. Maybe you're talking about that. I've never used those personally, but I could see them being absolutely useful for sure. So right hand side, I've got red and yellow mixed together. And then I described quickly there, but I'll slowly describe. I want to add a little bit of white to this just to lighten it up a little bit more. So it blends a little nicer with kind of the lighter pinks. I want a little more of a light orange here. So I find white is a good color to add just to do a quick little shade or two lighter here, a little brighter. And same as usual, I'm just applying this, you can see in my nice curved strokes, just like I described on the left hand side, we want to blend this a little bit into our pink. So you can see just on the edge that the orange is touching here, you're just wanting to kind of move your brush in between to help blend those two colors. And then we can bring the orange down just a little bit more. I wouldn't go quite as far down as the left hand side did because we have a little more color to add later. We have some yellow, but you can see you can still add some streaks. I got a little bit of blue in there by accident. I'm just going to blend that away. But yes, just continuing this pattern of kind of adding, doing some nice curved strokes coming down to the left for you. And again, I love the uh, just adding little spaces in between, kind of leaving room for different shades of color and eventually just different to colors in total. Oh, Marion says golden uh, glazing liquid is uh, awesome for fading and extending colors, fading color. It does sound like something we add. Can we cheat and use pre-made turquoise? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, I won't tell anyone. Shh. Twitch chat doesn't know. Nobody read that. Um, yes, I, I didn't mention at the start, but if you have just different colors that I'm using, Hippie lady, thanks for following and welcome in. Uh, then absolutely. And uh, don't worry, it's not cheating. It's not cheating. You're just using what you have. Um, the reason I used only five colors is to keep it a little bit easier for those who don't have too many paint colors on them. My goal is to make it so that people don't have to like run around town looking for every little supply. They can just probably make one trip and uh, get the basics. I just always stick to the basics to make it easier for everyone else. So if you have different stuff, then uh, that's fine. Not cheating at all, you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can keep whispering to each other. Nobody knows, nobody knows. <laughs> Those premix colors, shh, don't tell. Golden glazing liquid, okay. Yeah, that sounds like something you add. That's very cool. Marion seems to really like it too. Um, I'll point out again too, you're welcome to 
bring these colors to the edge of both your canvases. Um, I wouldn't do a whole lot of mixing these two colors, turquoise and orange. They're not going to mix into a really nice color. They don't blend together very nicely because they're very opposite colors on the color wheel. Blue and orange are actually complete opposites. And what that means is if we mix them, we're actually going to get a very muddy kind of like brown or gray color. So we just want to avoid that for the most part here. So not as much crossing over unless you're kind of being a little more clean about it and keeping in your own space. But again, we don't want to be mixing this orange and teal. So stick to your side if you can, if you can. And if I didn't mention before, you're also welcome to bring this color up further, you know, kind of streaking into the pink if it's still a little bit wet. It's kind of nice to do that just to help with, again, the blend and the transition. And same goes for the left hand side. You can always put the turquoise a little higher up if you need to. I'll give another minute or two for uh, those still adding the turquoise and orange. Then we're just going to do something similar to last time. We're going to do different variations of those colors and kind of blend them in on each side. <clears throat> Confessions in the chat. So many confessions today. <laughs> I almost don't want to repeat them to keep them secret. <laughs> Not saying who. <laughs> knock, knock, stay out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> don't knock this time. Lock your doors. You're not allowed to go to the other side. No knocking required. This time, the other side has a big sign on the door. It says, beware, there's dogs here. Don't come in. I don't want anything you're selling. No knocking this time. Stay on your side for the most part, if you can. If there's a little spray here and there, that's okay. We can always fix that up later. <laughs> yeah, I said it once and Stephanie continues to knock knock. I think it's great too. Yeah, Kim, you too. Are your classes always Tuesday? No, this is actually a very abnormal day for me. Um, what I actually try and stick to for my free tutorials is the last Sunday of every month so that everyone knows kind of each month coming up, last Sunday of each month. I just have some personal commitments this month at the end of the month, so I had to do this a little more in the middle of the month. But I usually do Sunday evenings, actually. I usually do Sundays, same time, 7 p.m. EST. Uh, but I find weekend works best for a lot more people. I'm actually very happy that a lot of people were able to join us on this Tuesday. Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, because I've heard a lot of people requesting for weekends. So usually Sundays, usually Sundays. Um, but I am live on Twitch on Tuesday nights, generally painting. I'm not doing a painting tutorial or a class, but you'll see a lot of the same people here. And we're just kind of chatting and painting just as we're doing now, just with no organized instruction. Uh, but I always welcome questions. And uh, if I can help anybody with what they're doing, then absolutely. Mm hmm. My problem is getting turquoise. It's mostly blue, a little white and yellow. Correct. Yes. Um, and I will point out Grok too. I find turquoise kind of differs depending on the blue you have. Uh, that's why I always use phthalo blue specifically, P-H-T-H-A-L-O for those who don't know, phthalo. Uh, I find it produces really bright turquoise colors and different versions of blue can create more muted ones. So you might have a turquoise. It just might not be like the turquoise that I have, you know? But yes, I understand when you're mixing like three colors versus two, it can be a little more complicated. No worries, Kim. Yeah, if you gotta go, it's totally fine. Hope to see you another time. That would be great. It's when you learn. Yes, and I'll encourage you um, a good place to be. I'm not sure where you came from today. If you found me on Facebook or YouTube or somewhere else, but I will point you back to Facebook just because it's where I always post um, event pages for my step-by-step -step tutorials. So if it's the tutorials you like, um, yes, perfect. Then you're already there. Uh, just keep an eye on that page. I'm actually going to be posting March's tutorial uh, event page very soon. So you can look out for that and then you can do the same thing RSVP and then pop in when you like. But otherwise on Facebook too is my general Twitch schedule and when I'm online generally. Yes. But yeah. All good, Kim, if you gotta go. All right, so before we have this totally dry, let's start to go back into the left and then back into the right to kind of mix a little more color. So this side, we're gonna be using lighter turquoises, kind of moving down into a very light turquoise down here. And this side, we're actually going to use yellow to blend into your orange. It's gonna create all these nice in-between kind of light orange colors, some golden yellows, and then a nice bright yellow at the bottom. So I'll start at the left as usual. We're just using the same paintbrush, that large flat brush. And on my plate, I'm simply going to make a really nice light turquoise. So very similar to what we did up here. We're making a lighter version 
of our original color. So I'm just mixing a ton of white into my existing turquoise. Just creating this very, very light turquoise. Getting more of like the sea foamy color, you know? We're not in the deep ocean anymore. We're getting a little bit more shallow with this nice light turquoise. And same as usual, I just want to streak that kind of like in between our colors here. It's going to look very bold and brash to begin with, and then we'll start to blend it in. So just applying a few big streaks of color, still doing the same kind of swoop down, you know, bringing it close to the edge of the canvas or right to the edge of the canvas. And then doing some blending. So if your turquoise, if your original turquoise is still wet on the canvas, you can simply move your brush in between those two colors to blend. Or if you need to, you can remix a little bit of your darker turquoise and use that for blending. Just applying kind of a new fresh layer and blending to allow all these nice streaks to kind of combine together. So again, because things are kind of starting to dry, especially further up as well, you might just need to take your time with uh, reapplying a little bit of color. Again, don't panic if it gets a little sticky. Just means you need to reapply a little more of your color. So just keep dipping into new colors, applying, and then moving your brush in between to help blend, smoothing it all out. You can see it might take a little more work now that we have all these new colors on here, but it'll still work out just fine. I'm just going to blend for a quick minute more and then I'll move over to the right hand side and really explain what's going on over there. And I guess as a side note here, you can move now all the way down to the canvas. You can see in the original, on the very bottom, I just ended with a super light turquoise. So I used lots of white to just kind of lighten the whole thing up, really get a nice variation of turquoises going. So you can mimic that if you'd like, or you can just keep kind of streaking down with whatever versions of turquoise and blues that you like. See how it's all nice smoothed out now. I'm gonna add a little more streakiness and then move over to the other side. <clears throat> Panda, I'm so glad. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, for those new to Twitch, I thank you for coming over. I know that sometimes moving over to a new platform can be kind of weird. It sounds like a lot of you found me on Facebook. Um, you're kind of like, what is this new space? But again, I promise we're always happy to help you. We were all new at one point. I'm only a year and a half on here. Twitch was brand new to me before that. So we all have the same questions at the beginning and we're always happy to help. But I'm glad, I'm so glad you're having fun, Panda and mom. All right, I'm gonna clean this up in a little bit, but I wanna make sure the right-hand side knows what they're doing as well. So I'm gonna move over quickly to the right-hand side. You can use a large flat brush as well. So the same brush we've been using. And you can actually just dip into some yellow. You don't really need to blend it with anything. I'm just going to use plain yellow, which I know sounds kind of boring, but once we add it and start to blend it into our orange, we're gonna get all these nice in-between colors. We're gonna get some nice light oranges. I described like golden yellows. You'll get lots of variation by doing this, by applying the yellow right into this orange and around the orange. You'll get lots of good variations here. So as usual, I'm just kind of applying in between the colors to begin with and then moving my brush a little bit more to help blend. And if you're like me and your orange is maybe a tad dry, you can always just re-dip into your orange and use that orange to help blend the fresh yellow that you just added. So same thing, you can always re-add color. It helps with the nice smooth blend to re-add color. So don't hesitate to do that. We always need to do that, it seems, because the acrylic paint dries very quickly. And if you don't, you're just a speedy painter and that's fine too. Look at all those nice colors coming through though. And for this right hand side, you can see what I do is I just kind of continue blending down and I'll eventually end with a nice kind of light yellow. So if you'd like, you can do the same thing as the other side. We can add some white to our yellow if you want to make a nice, very bright and light kind of bottom streak here, just a nice kind of buttery yellow down here. But otherwise just adding our yellow and blending into our orange. <clears throat> Thank you, Jen. Jen, this is such a fun design. I agree. I think you all would be blown away if you saw the reference photo I used for this because it's insanely different. Um, we started with a photo of like, it was like a, 
a dock, like a boardwalk almost. It looked like something from Los Angeles or something like that. And it was the sky. The sky was this beautiful transition of like blues to pinks and the nice purples in between and everything. And I was like, oh, I really like that sky. And we almost made this painting into, yeah, a boardwalk scene. We were gonna put a big dock here. We were gonna put some lamp posts. And instead I just did this background and everyone said, oh, I just like the background so much. And I said, let's let's keep it simple then. Let's just do a background, and a nice tree on top instead. So the painting really transitioned very quickly. And that's what I do on Twitch when I'm not teaching tutorials, I'm just painting. And sometimes I'm painting an upcoming tutorial design. It's really fun to have people watching me because they can give me suggestions, say, oh, I like that or I don't like that because I'm very open to um, comments and criticism like that because I want to make sure what I'm teaching is, you know, a design that people really want to paint, not just something like kind of cool and they're like, all right, I guess it's okay. I want people to really enjoy it. So when I'm creating designs on Twitch, I always want to hear uh, what people think about them. Turquoise is three colors. It's going to be blue and white, Charlene, and then a little bit of yellow in there. The yellow is kind of what turns the blue into a turquoise. Why'd you say butter? <laughs> oh, uh, Nadine, are you off? No worries if you gotta go. I'm glad it's turning out, though. Yes, Laurie, I agree. Uh, Laurie said, I prefer this design over the dock, and I agree. I'm glad we went for more of a simplistic silhouette design. I think it just allowed the background to shine through. Again, that was our concern. We didn't want to cover up the background too much. We were worried about that. We we're like, all oh, this beautiful blending and these beautiful colors. We don't want to cover it up with a big fat dock and other things. So I said, all right, let's keep it nice and open. Uh, and then just to uh, clarify here, we're again, not really blending in the middle yet. We will be using some green to combine this because the yellow with the turquoise will do a nice green as we blend. We're going to kind of ignore the orange a bit. We're trying to actually soften up the orange. If you could, right hand side, try and soften up your orange in the middle here. So by softening up, I mean adding a little more yellow to it to make it a little lighter and brighter, or maybe even some white as well. That'll just help a little bit more with the um, blending we're going to do later. Because again, orange is not a very friendly color with uh, blues and turquoises. We'd rather have the yellow to blend. So if you could try and add a little extra yellow or kind of white closer to this edge here. You can still have lots of orange streaks coming close as long as they kind of fade out as they come closer to the middle. Oh, Nora, shout out to Nora. Is Nora painting along or just watching along? I know you said watching. But maybe Nora will paint later. Maybe Nora likes the painting, wants to try it. I'm sure she'd have a lot of fun with it. This was another goal. I wanted to keep this one a little more simplistic because again, being from Canada, I was wondering if people would paint this for family day, for example, and maybe some younger ones would be joining in. So I know we're working with lots of colors, but my hope was that we can just kind of go one at a time, keep it a little simplistic that way. And of course, the silhouette design is a little simpler as well. I said butter yellow. Oh, I did, didn't I? As much as I hate butter, I do tend to say buttery yellow a lot. You're right. Oh, no. OK, sorry. You said bye. Maybe you're saying bye to somebody else. All right. Sorry about that, Nadine. <laughs> or maybe it was bye to a certain color or something. Not sure. But I'm glad you're here. Glad you're staying. <laughs> OK, painting after. I got you, Jen. I got you. <laughs> or older, sure. <laughs> of course. The youngins and the oldens, and anywhere in between, who knows? <laughs> age doesn't matter, we could be new at any age to painting. Oops, that's a little too red. So again, as you get more comfortable, you can see I kind of added a little red by accident there. You can start to do that, but then blend it out, right? It's not like it's incorrect to add these other colors a little further down. It just creates more streaks and more blending to do. So if you're comfortable doing that, you can start to do some more bold streaks, like adding some bright oranges further down or bringing the pink a little further down, whatever you want. And left hand side, same thing, bringing blue down or turquoise up, any of the above, just kind of using your colors how you want and mixing them together. See, I just kind of grabbed a tiny bit of red, for example, and just kind of streak that in. 
You can see as you move up and down, back and forth, it kind of blends so it'll turn into orange, but you can also leave it a little more bright just by sticking it in there and not doing much with it. <laughs> Jen, I love butter <laughs> so much. I think I am in the, in the small little minority there saying I hate butter, honestly, yes. It's just a known thing in my Twitch channel at this point. We've done a few baking streams now where I uh, bake bake things and people might bake along or they just kind of watch along. And anytime I have to handle butter or touch butter or think about eating butter, it just sends me off. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you too can paint all many pictures. Thank you, Bob. It's always good to know. A little encouragement from Bob Ross is never, never a bad thing. That's who I learned from, by the way, for those who don't know as much about me. I didn't go to art school. I did high school level art classes, which involved minimal painting, honestly. Bob Ross is my, my true teacher. And it's the reason that I truly believe that anyone can paint. You don't need a fancy education or a degree. You just need a lot of practice. And that's what Bob really preaches about is just painting. You just got to paint. You gotta do it. It can be scary at points, especially at the start, but the more you do it, the easier it truly does get. You learn from others. You learn from yourself, though, as well. You learn from yourself as you paint. You say, oh, this didn't work, or I didn't do this well. This brush isn't working for me. And you start to learn what works for you. And I find that super important. It's not just a one, one technique or one-way street with painting. It can be a lot of different techniques, a lot of different ways to do things. Okay. Um, I'm just going to spend another minute or two kind of cleaning up things, maybe adding a few more streaks, nothing new, and then we're going to move to the middle again, everybody. So we're going to do more blending in the middle. Maybe I'll go back to my turquoise here. <laughs> Butter! <laughs> He didn't think of turquoise when he talked about Almighty Pictures or what else? Something else, Grok. Yeah, I'm just cleaning up my edges here. And just like last time, if you want to reapply maybe a little extra paint to your inside edge, where you're going to be meeting the other canvas, that would be beneficial for these next few steps here. Because once again, just like up here, we're going to be adding a new color in between and it will definitely help to have some fresh paint so you can easily blend it. So if you do have an extra moment, if you're kind of like just waiting for the next step, you can add a little extra either turquoise on the left side or that golden yellow kind of light yellow color on the right hand side. And that'll make it easier to blend our nice green that we're adding next. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of cleaning up and adding some extra turquoise and yellow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry you're struggling with turquoise so much. Did you check the kind of blue you have just out of curiosity? I'm just wondering if the type of blue is the, uh, the problem slash solution, you know? You at least know what you need. Oops, my blue traveled a little bit. That's okay. If you ever get something like this, you just don't panic. You can clean off your brush. You can even wipe away or you can just choose to kind of blend it in. I will be adding green next, so that's okay. It turned a little green. Knock knock, who's there? Butter. <laughs> I would shut the door immediately, thank you. <laughs> Not interested. It just says blue. No, I hate when that happens. Depending on the brand, Grok. <laughs> I've seen primary blue before. I'm like, but what is it? <laughs> what blue though? Yeah, it's about learning the brands, I think. Um, the Thalo Blue of my brand, for example, might not even be the same as a Thalo Blue from another brand, so it's a little bit of testing, unfortunately. Jen, you should. But keep That's what someone else said. You gotta hand out one side. It's so sweet that you each have one side. Yes! You can even write a little message in the heart. Oh, you can get so creative with it. Ah! Please do it. 
All right, we just applied a fresh coat of turquoise, a fresh coat of yellow. We're going to move some green in between. The light green is going to be kind of our transition color. I was describing before, green is made by mixing blue and yellow. So this nice turquoise, which is blue, white, and yellow actually, is going to mix very nicely into yellow. Uh, the one color we wanna be a little wary of is orange. We don't wanna bring the green too much into the orange. It's okay to swipe, of course, close to the orange or like on top of it. We just don't wanna blend it into a fresh batch of orange. Green and orange, uh, they're not complete opposites, but they're kind of far away from each other on their color wheel, so they're not going to blend into a nice kind of bright color. They might get a little muddy. So if you can, right hand side, make sure you're blending the green into your yellowy parts, or at least the more golden yellow parts, the very light orange if you can. But either way, let's mix a tiny bit of green here. We don't need much. We're just going to grab some yellow. I'm using the same brush, by the way, which I did wash off, just to be clear. Grabbing yellow mixing a tiny bit of blue and I'm only mixing a tiny bit because I want a nice light green. You can see in the original it's kind of like a very limey green, very bright. So we only want a little bit of blue into a larger pile of yellow to make a nice kind of light lime green. <clears throat> Maybe mine has too much red in it. The blue itself potentially because I think, uh, I'm not a color expert because I didn't go to school, but <laughs> I went to school, not art school. Um, <laughs> didn't go to school. Um, yeah, from what I know, there are blues with reds in them and yellows in them, which is kind of mind blowing. And I think thalo is more of the yellow one, if I'm correct, or green or something. Anyway, yeah, I'm learning too, <laughs> the more I talk to people about their colors. So I've got my lime green. I'll catch up and chat in a second. It's the same thing as up here that we did with the purple. We're just kind of streaking from the inside edge and streaking out into our color. So for the left-hand side, I'm streaking into the turquoise a little bit, just very softly. We don't need much. It's just a nice transition color so that we can connect these canvases together. So I'm just going anywhere, kind of in the turquoise area, maybe bringing it a bit down. Again, you can change your green as you go. If you want to lighten it up with some yellow or white, you can make it a little brighter. And then again, if you're getting something that's a little too streaky, you can always grab extra turquoise and just move that on top to help kind of fade it out a little bit. And I will do that on this side momentarily. Right hand side, you're doing the same thing, just grabbing your green, streaking it up and into your yellows, trying to avoid oranges if you can, or just very lightly streaking so it's not like mixing into the orange. That's the one thing we don't want. We just don't want to really mix into the orange. If it lays on top, on a little dry orange, that's totally fine. Or softly blends into a light orange, that should be okay as well. We just want to avoid the very deep oranges there. You can see how that's kind of allowing these to interact and transfer again. And again, you can also, if your partner allows it, move onto their canvas, allow the streaks themselves to connect as well. I find that phthalo blues are different, even the one, I know, I know, it's, kind of frustrating honestly and it doesn't make sense in my brain I'm like wouldn't a color be a color but different brands use different you know amounts of pigment and uh, I guess there are slight changes yeah I'm on, I didn't go to school no I went to school I just didn't go to art school <laughs> post-secondary education was opposite of art I did business instead but it's helped in other ways so it's all it's all good so just to go over what I was talking about before, if your green isn't blending, just take a little more of your old color. So if the left-hand side is having this issue, that would be turquoise, and you just use the turquoise to soften up any edges. I'm just moving it in between the turquoise and green. You can see how much that has just faded out the green there. I'm gonna move it a little further down too. Yeah, maybe Groke. If you can go into a little art store, I would, I would pose the exact question you're having and say, hey, I'm trying to make a nice, bright, beautiful turquoise. I think this might have a little more red in it. Can you recommend a blue that's a little more yellow or green um, toned? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure someone at the art store would be able to help you and have the correct verbiage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think what you're saying is probably dead on. <clears throat> Thalo blue comes in two hues, red and green. There it is, green rather than yellow. I shouldn't be saying yellow. Thank you, Marion. It's like yellow kind of makes sense because blue and yellow make green, but yeah, I guess it is green as the undertone. Jen says, I studied landscape architecture. Ohio State University color was very important. I didn't, wouldn't have guessed that for architecture. Uh, we drew a ton of maps and had to hand color them, but with special markers. 
Mm-hmm. All's well that ends well. Uh, was that Jude Lala? Thank you for the follow. And welcome in. We're doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. If you have any questions, even if you're not painting along, I'm absolutely happy to answer them. So welcome in. So again, right-hand side, if you're having trouble blending your green, just grab a little yellow. Grab little bits of yellow on your brush. Brush it on the edges of the green that are a little harsher or not blending, and you'll see them kind of fade out slowly. That's looking pretty good. I'll give you a couple extra minutes at least just for those who are streaking along here, having fun with blending. There's no real extra steps for the background here. It's it's really up to you at this point. If you want to re-add certain colors or lighten up certain colors, you can of course go in and just keep streaking. Again, the more comfortable you get with this, the more you can kind of be a little bold or add some really light streaks next to some really dark ones. It's all about confidence. As long as you're confident doing it, I'm sure you can handle it. And hopefully this little bit of instruction is giving you that confidence to kind of try it out a little bit. <laughs> don't you know who I am? I don't. <laughs> Sign the pan on the counter. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that aggressive. <laughs> is it Jew Lala? If it's something else, let me know. I've been thinking Jew or Joe Lala. But thank you very much for the compliment. Thank you. This is a very colorful painting for sure. Wanted to do something very, very bright and beautiful for just February, be it Valentine's Day, be it Family Day, whatever you're celebrating, just something nice and bright and colorful. Especially where I am in Canada, it's winter time, it's a little more dull outside. I want to brighten up everyone's day with this one. PB153 will give you primary thalo boot. Oh wow! Grok, if uh, you want to snag that info from Marion, that sounds helpful. You can walk into a store and just be like, this color code please. <laughs> Yes, it's all about trying and not being afraid of failing. Trying is the first step towards succeeding. That's very true. You don't know until you try, truly. And I almost guarantee, honestly, in painting, you will have times where something doesn't work or you quote unquote fail just for a moment, just for a moment. And you're like, ah, this didn't work. But the great thing about acrylics is that they dry super fast. You can go right on top or you can blend as I've been teaching you here, just using the colors and moving them together. But sometimes you're just like, I just don't want to deal with it. You can let it dry for 10 minutes and go on top. Beautiful. Jula, great. Julala, perfect. I will stick with that then. Just let go. <laughs> and fall like a little waterfall. Uh, going well, Charlene. Yeah, a lot of people are um, asking about when I'm going to kind of add some stuff to it. And that's kind of my next step. And my next plan is to add some new art pieces, excuse me, and prints to the shop. Again, for those who don't know, I do have a shop open, erinbunpaints.com. I sell my own original artwork. I sell prints of my artwork, uh, different merchandise items. But yeah, I'm excited to add to it, Charlene. That's kind of my next step in uh, my goals and my plan for the year is uh, to start to work on some new paintings and like series and topics and items to stick into the uh, store. Yes. It's warm. Is this true? That's why I made sure to say, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah, warm in Australia. Colors are really weather appropriate. Perfect! Yes, whether they're appropriate or get us out of the dull colors, bring the bright colors. I think everyone loves the bright ones for sure. <laughs> That's true. Absolutely, Marion, yeah. I'm sure Grok would appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Good quote, Bob. Very good. All those quotes are good. Hokey, welcome in. Hello! We're just in the middle of our tutorial painting for tonight. We're just getting our background pretty much done here. I'm just giving maybe an extra minute or two for those still painting. We have a lot of people here tonight, so I want to make sure we're all on the same pace. Nobody's too rushed. We've got the exciting silhouette coming up next, though. Oh, and that right on cue, my battery dies. Keep painting, everybody. Just got to change a battery super fast. And then we can go right on to the next step here. Right on cue. I'm exhausted. I'll go. Get it perfect. There we go. Yeah, I hope that helps. I'm sure that would grow to go into an art store and be like, this one. <laughs> All right, so another minute, we're going to move on to this tree. 
So as you can see, if you're following the, the design that I have here, the only color remaining is black now. So unless you have different ideas for what you want to do on top of this background, maybe you do, maybe you want to add even more color or like switch color palettes. I was actually debating doing that in the original. I was thinking of using like the pinks and oranges and yellows over here for the tree and then the blues and greens and turquoises over here. Um, anyway, if you're sticking to my design, you will only, only need black paint moving forward. So no need to pour any other colors. You can prep your palette by adding some black paint now. As I will do as well. And I will also be moving to a smaller brush as well. Oops, my mouse. Uh, so for those who are wondering about brush types, I've been using the same flat brush this whole time just for all the blending. I'm gonna move to a smaller brush now. I don't know why I have two, I am one person. Uh, this nice medium round brush. So this has a little more of a point to it. It's just a little smaller as well. So a little easier to control for our thinner branches. I, I wouldn't go that route either, Grok, honestly. <laughs> and I'm not Swedish, so... <laughs> well, that's exciting. It was Vindaloo you were making, right, Todd, tonight? <laughs> You're all talk, Jen. You're all talk. <clears throat> all right, let's start to tackle this lovely silhouette design. So what I started with when creating this was of course the nice trunk. I started just by doing black on both sides. So both canvases will be working together. You can see the seam or I guess the split is right up the middle. So both sides can be working on the inside edge on a nice thick trunk to begin with. I go just below halfway up. I would say half is about here at the top of the heart. So just below halfway, you're gonna stop at the same area. You're gonna do one half of a heart on one side, one half on the other. Hopefully a nice simple shape, just doing a nice angled line and then curve coming to the middle. And then later on, we will slowly add all these lovely branches and leaves. So just focusing on the trunk for now, trunk and heart is what we'll do. All right, so both sides, you can grab a nice, again, maybe smaller brush. I'm using a medium round, but again, whatever brush you have, whatever one you're comfortable with for smaller objects and trees, I guess, if you've painted before, and then grabbing black paint. Uh, the left hand canvas, of course, you're sitting on the right hand side, so you're looking in the middle in between the two canvases. And on the left hand, or right hand canvas, you're on the left hand side. Just meeting in the middle, I guess, is easier to say. So if you are physically together, you can, of course, communicate about where you're going to stop. I guess if you're further apart, um, I would say you're stopping kind of at least if you're following my design here, I'm stopping in the area where like the green and purple start to kind of combine here. So right in between that area, it's just below halfway. If you want to think of it that way as well, just below halfway. That's another good way to think of it. That way you're putting the heart kind of right in the middle. Uh, the trunk is always a little bit wider at the bottom. So you can see I'm leaving a little extra width down here at the bottom just to give that nice trunk shape or tree shape. It's always a little wider and then gets a little thinner on the way up. And again, both sides are doing this here. And just plain black paint, unless you're doing something creative and different, I'm using just plain black paint. <laughs> I'll talk. Little inspired, oh, okay. Gotcha, Todd, <laughs> little variations. Hokey says, I always make my true tongues too chonky. I guess I should say that too. I always uh, advise people, start smaller than you think. Yes, it's very easy to get excited and be like, all oh, right, and just put on a big chonk of a tree or whatever you're painting. But most of the time, if you start small, it's always easy to make it bigger. So especially with this tree, you can see I went maybe a little bigger here. And because this one's smaller, uh, it's easy, easy for me to just say, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So I just add a little more black to even it out and get it to match. But yeah, that goes with most objects, I would say. Most little painting additions start smaller. You can always make it bigger. It's harder to go opposite. But yes, I would equate it to excitement. <laughs> you're just excited to add it and you're like, oh no, a little much. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes, the mighty maple. We can put a little, uh, little tap in here, a little bucket. Start to make our syrup for the winter. Oh, Jen, absolutely, yes, for those, uh, thank you, Groke. The Discord link is in there for you, Jen, in chat. Just note, it'll take about 10 minutes for you to be allowed to post in Discord. It's just a security measure. I've had people pop in and, uh, spam some bad things before, so we just give a little bit of a timeout. <laughs> to deter that and then you're welcome to post whatever you like we have lots of art sharing channels in there i love seeing what other people are making art wise we have different ones for painting for bullet journaling for drawing digital art and then we also have just a bunch of channels for general conversation topics as well sometimes we watch movies in there too and game as well so hope to see you in there mighty yarks from tiny is that a bob Ro it sounds like a bob quote almost <laughs> from tiny acorns grow <laughs> All right, so again, I'm just below halfway. If halfway is here, I'm probably just below. So at this point, you and your partner or just yourself can start to plan out your little heart. So if you are together, I would suggest maybe choosing a point where the um, top middle is going to meet. So for example, maybe around here, I think I estimated that was about halfway, maybe a little above. It's like the heart is resting at halfway. So choosing where you're going to meet in the middle, and then you're each going to do your separate side of the heart. So the left-hand side, you're going to be curving up and around, and then doing a nice straight line coming down to your trunk. And the right-hand side, you'll be going up to the right, curving around, and then coming down to the left to meet up with your trunk. Now, we want to leave open space for the heart, so this is almost, I guess, the opposite of what I just said. If anything, I would make it maybe a wee bit bigger than you think because with this one, you can always close it in, right? So in terms of the heart shape and the open space you're leaving, this is the complete opposite of what I was just preaching. But again, with different scenarios, we have different, uh, different tips. You'll wanna make it maybe, if you're nervous, just a little bigger, because what you can do is if you made it too big, I'll demonstrate over here. I'll try and make this a wee bit bigger than the other side. I have like maybe a little more open space here. To match it, all you need to do is shrink it up from the middle like this. So it just gives you more room to play around with because it's hard, of course, to go the opposite way, at least in this step here, because you're leaving this open space. And once you close up this open space, it's hard to get back. It is possible, of course, to let the black dry and re-add some color on top once the black is very dry. But just to make it a little easier, I would just try your best to be very conscious of the open space you're leaving. And again, that means you can make it maybe a little bigger and then shrink it down. So I'm just trying my best to match both. And again, if you and your partner are a far ways away, this is, I think, kind of a fun part. The idea that you can try your best to match them up, communicate however you want, and then when you get together next time, you can see if they do match up and maybe make some corrections if you want or just leave it the way it is. I think that's kind of a fun little, uh, Fun little journey there. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those who don't know, Kyle, guess who is Nadine? And I know a few of you remember Nadine uh, from a movie night. I won't retell the story. Just for Nadine's sake, if Nadine wants to retell it, go ahead. But uh, we remember Nadine from unmuting at a certain time during a movie night. And uh, I love, I love continuing to have Nadine here. <laughs> That's why she's referencing the toilet. <laughs> it's from Switch Monopoly game? Excuse me. Why would a Switch Monopoly game be telling me about an oak tree coming from a seed, etc.? That sounded so, so much like some good wisdom. I can't imagine the Monopoly money man giving me good wisdom. But maybe I'm judging too quickly. Uh, the other thing I'm doing, everybody, to my heart is I'm also concentrating on the outside edge. So I was just talking to you about the inside edge. I'm now looking at the outside edge. I'm just trying to keep the width of the black consistent. So I'm kind of using my brush to, again, widen certain areas to keep that area the same width all the way around. And then, of course, trying to match on the other side if I can there. Close enough. <laughs> Bigger but thinner line. Yep, <laughs> I'm contradicting everywhere. <laughs> my squirrels got a real treat this year. The entire first crop of hazelnuts for my trees, red dragon and theta. Like an early drop of the hazelnuts, you mean, Jen? 
or just many, many, many. They need lots of nuts, right? Because they bury a bunch and then they forget where they all are. <laughs> they need a lot. See, yes, I mentioned I remember Cindy remembers. There's a few of us here from that movie night, that faithful movie night. There it is, yes, Nadine. I never want to tell the story just in case it's not something I want to say, but if you're happy to tell it, that's great. I accidentally had my mic on while peeing and everyone heard it. <laughs> it was a movie night. We were all watching a movie night and uh, Nadine accidentally had her microphone on. We heard a little bit of a drizzle, but no images, of course, so that's fine. It was a small little embarrassing moment, but I'm glad Nadine saw the humor in it because it honestly was just a little funny and uh, happens to all of us here and there, leaving our microphone on by accident. I'm sure a lot of us can relate being virtual at this point, maybe working from home, Zoom microphone left on, but the dog's barking or you say something embarrassing anyway. That's all it was. We had a preacher do that in church, went to the potty while they were taking the offering. Oh no. Oh dear. All right, so I've spent a lot of time just kind of moving this heart around, doing the nice trunk. How about we move on to some branches if you're all ready. So I'm just going to use the same, uh, the same brush. I lost my words there. If you know you have a brush that you'd prefer to use for nice thin lines, because we're making some thin branches, right? Feel free to switch to that brush, be it a bigger brush or a smaller brush. In fact, just to kind of point this out, I usually use the big brush because it has uh, at least mine is a flat brush. It has all the bristles lined up, you know, in a nice thin line. And I find that really helps me with nice thin lines as a result. And the big bristles actually do help me because they glide a lot easier. They kind of fall into place and allow for a nice thin line to be formed. So don't be afraid of the bigger brushes if you want to try those. Um, or you can go a little slower with a small brush. I say slower because it holds less paint, so you'll need to refresh the paint a lot more, but it will allow for a nice thinner line, of course. I'm going to keep sticking with this brush though, the medium round brush. And both sides, again, both sides will be doing this. You're just simply adding some branches to your heart. So what I like to do is I like to try my best to kind of carve away from the heart. So rather than just choosing a spot and going directly out from there, like at a very right hand angle, instead what I try and do is slowly and gradually kind of part away from the heart. So I'm going to use this black paint and the tip of my brush and I'm going to kind of follow my heart Oh, isn't that cute? I'm going to follow my heart. And then I'm just going to slowly part away as I create a branch. So I hope everyone's understanding that. It kind of creates a little more of a V shape rather than directly going out at a right angle. Um, and that's not a technical like hard rule. You can, of course, do some more dramatic branches if you want. But I just think it looks a little more natural to make it so that it's kind of slowly just kind of separating from the heart. So you can see how this kind of just continued off and again formed a little bit of a V shape. And I'm going to carry this way far away. I'm going to just move it kind of over to the left hand side. And what I'm doing with my brush is I'm slowly just reducing pressure. So you can see once again how I have a wider stroke. And then as I reduce pressure, I kind of remove pressure from my bristles. I create a thinner and thinner line until there's nothing at all. <clears throat> I think I saw a question in there, just want to check. Do they have to be symmetrical? Nope, they do not. If you want them to be symmetrical, you can. Uh, in my original, just to compare some branches here, you can see I have this branch nice and tight. This one's a little further. I have a branch coming off of the side here, but none over here. Yeah, you can do them however you like. If you want to um, make them symmetrical though, you can absolutely do that if you'd like. I'm just gonna quickly catch up on chat to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Liss and uh, Liss, Liss, I'll call you Liss. Thank you for following and welcome. And we're just doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. If you want to watch along or paint along, you're welcome to. We're of course a little more into the painting. If you just got here, you might want to restart the stream or check this out on YouTube when it's posted. But either way, enjoy the painting and I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> Everyone pees, it's true. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot you did a chewing one one time, Cindy. Absolutely. Fix them all before they're ripe. Oh, okay. Bad squirrels. <laughs> I love the squirrels too. I know they can be a little bit of a menace, but I love them too. Mic thing happens all the time at school. There are students who have hearing impairments. Some teachers need to wear the mics. They have forgotten to turn them off. Kids hearing in the bathroom. Yeah, it's an unfortunate scenario, but it's not the worst. 
Crunching ice is kind of addicting, isn't it, Jen, though? Drew a lot of trees in landscape. Oh, so you're an expert then. Yeah, trees are something I do a lot of. They're just so, you know, of course, universal, relatable. Like, I don't really think there's anyone who I've heard hates nature, <laughs> hates trees. Uh, maybe your neighbor's tree that spills onto your lawn you hate, but otherwise, trees are always beautiful and they come in so many different shapes and sizes. There's so much you can do with them. So I do a lot of landscape and just trees in general, a lot of nature outdoorsy things for my paintings as well. Yes, I know. Happy early birthday. Oh, thank you, Vray. I appreciate it. <laughs> I do forget more often because I turn off my little hydrate reminder for tutorials. <clears throat> and is it Liss? I hope it is Liss. Love from France. Welcome in from France. I really need, I, I keep saying I should get this map and uh, start to mark off where everybody's from. I think that's cool. Not write names, just like, we got a France here. Welcome in, Liss. Yeah, France! <laughs> Start chasing me down the hall. Oops! <laughs> Trees are way more than people give them credit for. They communicate and feed each other through fungi and soil. Yeah, the root systems. Oh, they're strong. Alright, so if I wasn't explaining there, I'm just also adding branches to my branches. So it's very similar to what I just did. It's as if we are working off the heart, we're just working off of a different area. So I'll show you again here. I'm just traveling up the branch I already have. When I'm ready, I'm just slowly parting away, doing maybe a little curve here and there. Your branches don't have to be perfectly straight. I like giving them a little bit of a wave or a curve. And then you have a branch on your branch. And then you do a branch on that branch and a twig on that branch, and then you have a full tree. So I'm just slowly adding, you know, splitting in two here and there, adding a small little twig at the end here and there. I really like the look personally of splitting at the end. You can see I'll do that a lot because it's a nice way to fill up your tree without adding too much clutter. Um, I avoid adding too many big branches. I find it clutters a lot more, but you can just always fill up by adding smaller twigs instead. Um, if anyone's looking for exact numbers, just because I know that does help sometimes, I stick to kind of three larger branches for each side. I'm kind of pointing them out with my mouse here. One, two, three, and then you can see all the rest of the spaces uh, covered up by twigs and other branches that are flowing off of those bigger ones, right? So one, two, three. On this side, I have one, two, three. And then otherwise, just small twigs, maybe these two extras down here. Um, I guess I should point out as well if you are adding these little lovebirds in the same area that I did, right hand side, so the right hand canvas, you'll want to make sure you have a branch that you want these little birds on. So if I could recommend, I would do a branch that's like lower end of the heart here and kind of swings just over to the right. It can still have a little curve, but somewhat of a horizontal um, plane here. Something like that so that the birds can rest. But again, you're welcome to change the design. You can move them over to the left hand side or separate the birds, have some on either side if both sides want to do some birds. But sticking to my design here, I'm going to make sure this branch is ready for my birds later on. Um, I also want to point out again how I'm continuing to go back to widen out the start of my branches. I know I mentioned before about keeping some more pressure and then reducing pressure to get a nice thin tip or a thin line, but you can always kind of help that out just by going back and widening out the start of your branch, just making it a little more dramatic. So don't be afraid to do that. Kind of go back and fix things up as you go. Yeah, France, I would go back to. I went on a high school trip and only was there for like a couple days. And it was a high school trip, so of course a little more monitored. I was younger, couldn't do a whole lot of exploring myself. I'd love to go back now that I'm a little older one day. Lots of places to travel to. Zach, welcome in. Good to see you. Hello. Just in the middle of a step-by-step -step painting tutorial. We're doing our nice tree, as you can see. Welcome in. I hope your Tuesday's going well. So again, you can see I'm mostly working on the left-hand side, but I'm trying to go a little back and forth here. You can just keep adding your branches wherever you want them. 
You can, of course, mimic my design if that helps you. Kind of look at one branch at a time. Just add one little twig at a time. You'll get there eventually. Just go nice and slow. And I guess I would say keep in mind, too, of course, we're using branches to fill up space. But when we add our little leaves as well, we're going to be focusing more on the ends of branches. So if you like the idea of having lots of leaves, I would just make sure you have a lot of different little twigs going on, lots of endings to branches, lots of little points to add to. So just keep that in mind. If you like the look of these leaves, you'll want lots of little spaces for them. So give them some nice little, uh, little landing areas at the end of your twigs and branches. Even it's just by creating like a small little bit here and there, you know? See, yeah, Jen, exactly. I was just thinking that as I was saying that, I was like, maybe it would be nice to have birds on both so one side isn't missing them. Her and her partner, me, oh, it'd be sweet. Amazing buildings in Budapest, I'm sure. Jen agrees. And the food, I like to go to places with good food for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, and another quick tip. Just for those who might who might be struggling with the ends of the branches, the nice thin tips, the nice little points that you see me getting here, um, I find kind of flicking your brush helps. I know I've said this in other tutorials, but I'll repeat again for those who haven't seen my tutorials, just kind of using the tip of the brush and moving your handle back so that the bristles move forward and flick off of the canvas. And you'll see me do it here. So I move it back and then my bristles flick off this way. They kind of rise up from the canvas and they create a nice little little tip as a result. Just doing a nice little wisp like that. I find it very much helps. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, another little tip I have as well is sometimes I use a little extra water in my paint for these um, nice thin lines. It does, of course, water down the paint a little bit more, but with black, you hardly notice it. You can see it's still nice and dark. Uh, but by watering down the paint just a little bit, it makes it a little more thin, right? And that allows, of course, for thinner lines. If you have a very thick paint, that might be a little bit more difficult to make some very thin lines, right? So by thinning the paint, you're giving yourself almost a better chance at a nice thin line. It just allows the paint to flow a little bit easier and better uh, for those nice little thin edges and uh, nice thin tips there. I'm losing it with where I am branch-wise. I think I'm getting close to done this one. I think I made this a little bigger. Yes, let's move over here. Again, I am doing my absolute best at getting as close as possible to my original. You might see some branches that are slightly different, but of course you can look at my original in the top right there if you do want to follow it exactly. Just here and there, I think I have some larger and smaller branches compared to the original. I'll say again, keep in mind that we're doing some leaves later. So if you're feeling like it could still use maybe a little bit more of a filled up space, keep in mind we'll be filling up later with our leaves. So you might actually be good if you feel like you're close to filled up. You might not want to add too many more branches. You might want to leave, leave them alone for some leaves. You can always add more branches later as well. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I hope I see some photos of the artwork. I'll talk about that a little later as well, but I love to encourage people posting photos just so we can see what everybody did. It's cool we can all paint together, but we still can't really see what we've all made, so I'll, I'll throw out some suggestions for sharing photos a little later. Thank you, Jen, for reminding me. Uh, and then to continue the idea of these paintings being combined, don't be afraid to move branches into your partner's zone with permission, with permission. Uh, so I find especially up here, you can kind of curve some branches purposefully so that they move into the other other canvas. So this one I kind of curved to the right on purpose so I could cross over and do a nice little switcheroo here. And then you can see it kind of helps with the whole idea of the paintings being a little more combined. I'll do the same thing with the other side as well. I'll start a branch on the right hand side and move it over to the left a little bit more. Here I go here. I'll start with a big one. Kind of comes off and swoops this way. And then I'll add some branches that kind of cross over the other way. Oh yes, and the edges. <laughs> I 
I missed my middle edge, but otherwise I've been doing okay. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I've truly been forgetting, but everyone else don't forget your edges. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. It's hard for me to remember edges as I'm teaching, unfortunately. So there's another example. I just kind of crossed over, allowed it to move onto the other canvas. Just allows those two sides to interact a bit better. F, hey, thank you for following. We're just doing a step-by-step -step tutorial here. Painting tutorial with acrylics. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. A lot of people are painting along right now. Some are just watching as well, though. So if you want to just enjoy the show, you're more than welcome to. And I do this uh, once a month. So if you want to tune in another time and paint along, you absolutely can. <laughs> OCD, hey, you read it as eggs. We do have an egg command too, so it works. <laughs> welcome in. Expand this a little further. Again, trying my best to keep to the branches of my original, but it's more important that you're just filling up the space the way you want. Maybe you think mine looks a little cluttered or not enough. You can, of course, fill it up however you like. I'm almost there. I'm sure you guys are probably quicker than me at this point, especially if you have two people painting, so... Just give me another quick minute or two. I'll try and concentrate on getting these branches down. And we can add some leaves and our cute little birdies. Eggs are just as important. Don't forget the eggs. <laughs> Were you here for Cindy's egg story? I think that was yesterday. If you were, you know that eggs are important. Watching the eggs are important. <laughs> yeah, some might say more. Some might say more important. Um, I'm going to shift this a bit just so for the, so the right hand side isn't left out here. You can still see what I'm doing. And I'll shift over a little bit in a second. Uh, yeah, Cindy forgot her eggs on the stove, unfortunately. And... Turned a little burnt as she was watching. She was describing. Edna, I can't wait to do it real in daylight. Ooh, is that what you're planning? Waiting for a nice, nice bright day? Yeah, I find it just as exciting to watch. I've watched tutorials before and not followed along, and you kind of learn a little bit still, and sometimes it's just satisfying to see a painting completed from start to finish, you know, and how it's made. Quite literally, like that show, How It's Made, is kind of the idea as well. Seeing how something is made from start to finish. So again, just make sure you're leaving some room for your birdies. I have a small little gap here. Our birds are small, so they don't need a lot of room. But don't forget about them. We want to make sure they have a little bit of room to, uh, to have their own little space so we can see their shape against the uh, nice rainbow background. <laughs> yeah. How It's Made is like a show you could put on for hours and just <laughs> waste hours watching. Not waste, you're being educated, but yes. It's very satisfying to see how things are made from start to finish. So I can understand the same idea here. It's so satisfying, isn't it? All right, I think that's my last branch and I'm going to assume that everyone's caught up because I am one person. Maybe there's some of you who are one person as well painting along. Rachel, hi! Oh, it's good to see you again. Rachel was here in our chat earlier for those who remember, not this stream, but previous streams. Welcome in Rachel and your crew. We're just doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial right now. I do these once a week, once a month, excuse me, not week. <laughs> I used to do them once a week. I do them once a month now. Hello, yes, hello, welcome back. Uh, so I'm teaching an audience right now, step-by-step -step how to create uh, this original design I made a few weeks ago, just in the corner here. And we're almost done. You can see we're just gonna add some leaves, some cute little birds. Some people are here just watching those. So even if you're not painting along, feel free to stick around. But Rachel, thank you so much for reading in. Um, please check out Rachel, for those who don't know Rachel. Um, Rachel's very sweet. I honestly haven't caught one of your streams yet, Rachel, but we've chatted a little bit, and she seems like a sweet, sweet, uh, artistic streamer. 
I think a little newer to the platform, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had questions and that's why I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, please check her out. Oh, that's right. I just peeped your page again. Fruits and donuts. <laughs> I saw you painting, um, I forget what food specifically, but it was very yummy. Oh, an avocado, <laughs> very yummy looking. So if you like some yummy looking paintings, please check out Rachel. Is it cow? Cow does welcome in, hello. Love it, dropping off viewers. Yeah, absolutely, go eat, go eat. I hope my viewers check you out. And again, I uh, I intend to pop by one of your streams too. So thank you. Yes, yes, it was the avocado for me. I'm pretty sure it was avocado I saw. Anyway, thanks for popping in. There you go. Yes, please check her out. And I haven't had time to pop in, but I will. Enjoy your dinner, Rachel, if you're if you're popping out quick. And I hope your uh, crew enjoys what we're doing here. All right, so next step, everybody, now that I have slowly added my branches, we're just going to add our lovely little leaves. I'm going to continue using this medium round brush. It's the perfect brush for these leaves, in my opinion. If you do have a kind of medium flat brush that has flatter bristles kind of all lined up, you can use that as well. You can use kind of the corner of that brush and do the same stroke that I'll be doing. But I do like this round brush specifically. So all I'm doing is I'm loading it up with some black paint. I'm going to, I'm gonna show you from this angle here. Go at the canvas kind of at an angle. I'm not going straight at it. I'm not going flat, of course. I'm going kind of at an angle like this so that I can get the point of the brush to uh, create kind of the point of a leaf. And then what I'm going to do is just do a small little stroke, lift off, and then it's going to leave behind a little leaf. Ready? Just like that. Just one little leaf. It's like a little bean shape or sausage shape. But truly, that's all you're doing. A quick little stroke like that. I know it's a little scary because it's kind of like a quick little touch and move away, but as long as you're again pointing your brush away and using it at the angle I just showed you, it allows you to create like a small little tip on each leaf to get a little bit like that leaf shape that we know without needing to go in and slowly shape up each leaf. This is just a quick little way, just stroking like this, doing quick little taps or strokes. And you can see placement wise, I'm adding these at the ends of my branches. I like the idea of keeping it a little more um, delicate and open. So rather than loading up the entire tree, I'm just kind of focusing on wherever there's a little point here and there and doing two to three leaves, I would say. Hey, Jay, thank you for following. Hello. If you heard what I said, if not, rather, if you didn't hear, I'm doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial right now. Some people are painting along, some people are watching, uh, but welcome in either way. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Rachel. See you, see you. Ah, well, like, that's fine, too. It's uh, nothing wrong with it, but it's going to take you a lot longer. <laughs> if you have the time and want to dedicate that effort to making beautiful little leaves, I'm sure that would be beautiful as well. Obviously, it would be. I'm going to go ahead and add a little branch here. So you can see as you go, you might see big gaps and you're like, oh, a little branch could fit right here with a couple leaves. Looks nice. Uh, yeah, no harm in doing that. It would just uh, be a little more of a process which is fine. It means you put more time and effort into it if you're giving it to your bestie. But yeah, it's a, it's the brush type for sure. It's a medium round, just the round brush in general. It can be a larger round brush. You'll get larger leaves at that point, larger strokes, but yeah, point outwards, pull in, quick little motion. It is a little bit of a learning thing because again, it is like one stroke, you know, and that can be a little intimidating, but keep in mind, you can always go and fix things up if they're not the way you want. Round out some edges, make a point if you need to, but the more you practice, the better you'll get for sure. And it was, uh, I saw you in chat. If you want to correct me, <laughs> Kawetas, welcome in. If I botch your name, feel free to roast me. Tell me how to pronounce it and I will try my best to adjust. But thank you for following. I do really appreciate it. Look at this, just slowly filling up. I'm trying to make sure, oh, I missed this guy. Not missing any branches here. And like I mentioned before, at this point, it's a good way, a good point rather to see where the gaps are. If you want to fill up more, if you want to keep it more open, this is when you can really start to tell and start to make those decisions. And you know, you could leave some open twigs and branches if you want. I kind of like the idea of giving each and every little twig or branch their own leaf or two or three but if it means cluttering up if it means you're forcing it in there then you don't need to worry about it right just do what you need to do 
It's a made up word, don't mind. All right, like I want to say cow, but I don't want to come off like I'm saying, hey cow, you know? So I'll try to say coetas, coetas, coetas. And we'll see what I stick with. But again, welcome into the stream. I, I think you came from Rachel's stream, right? You said raid, so I'm assuming that. Hope you enjoyed her stream as well. Again, I hope to pop by hers very soon. I just kind of cleaned up my follower list recently, so hopefully it allows me to see a little more clearly who I'm hoping to visit. And for those newer to Twitch, maybe you're not sure what just happened there. It was a raid. So it was another Twitch channel that was ending, and instead of just shutting off stream and saying bye everybody and everyone leaves, they moved to another channel. So Rachel, Rachel Makes, was nice enough to choose my stream. She said, oh, let's see what Aaron's doing. And she essentially moved her viewers over here. So we have a new little batch of people watching along. It's a way to discover new streams and to make new friends. So very happy she chose me. It's always a nice little, nice little, uh, little act, you know? The only thing worse than yellow snow is green snow. True, Bob, true. <laughs> Truer words have never been spoken. <laughs> yeah, they I was just saying that she does such cute little foods. And a good job at them too. I, I know she does them quick, kind of like me too. I do a lot of faster painting, in my opinion, compared to most I've seen. So yeah, I related a lot to what I saw her doing. These are getting a little messier just because I'm further away, honestly. It's a little harder to do my nice quick Lead strokes, so you might see me touching these up a little more. Excuses. <laughs> oh, Bob. <laughs> yes, Soylent Green. <laughs> Our least favorite green snow, what is it? That's funny. Yeah, Bob's got some good ones. Uh, everyone's welcome to use that, by the way, for those in chat. If you just type in the word exclamation point Bob quote, all one word, um, I've set up a little function to spit out a random Bob Ross quote because he has some great quotes and sometimes we need a little bit of extra inspiration or push from our friend Bob so he's always there to give us that and sometimes he talks about yellow snow and sometimes he talks about talent being a pursued interest anything you're willing to practice you can do that's just what I was saying earlier it's all about practice it's not necessarily about having that degree or the fine arts education. Some tips and tricks are obviously helpful, but truly practice is the big one. All right, I think I've got enough leaves on here. I don't see any missing branches. If I'm wrong, somebody please point me out because I don't want to leave any branches without leaves. I want them all to be included. And I think they're all there. So I'm just going to leave once again a minute or two for anybody who might be still adding leaves or catching up here. And we just have one last step to go, to go. We just have our cute little lovebirds, if you'd like to add them. Of course, always optional. You can leave them out if you just like the tree. In fact, we almost left it just as a tree when I was designing this, but the birds were just a nice little ending piece. So I do encourage it. My favorite green snow is grass, Edna. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> My favorite green snow is no snow. <laughs> It is grass, in fact. I love snow, actually. Being a being a Canadian, it's not like you're forced to like snow, but we, we live in a lot of snow and I've learned to love it. I'm glad, I'm glad Nadine Lee is having fun. Yes, yeah, shout out to Lee again. <laughs> Who's having fun? <laughs> you're naked leaves. I mean, branches, great, perfect. I've done this before where I finish a painting. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I hate leaving just one branch. It's a... Uh, it's like a decision, right? It's either I leave a few, but I, sometimes I just don't want to leave any at all. It's like, I don't want them excluded. I don't want them forgotten about. I want to include all the branches. So thank you, Jen, for double checking. All right, and I think we'll be ending perfectly right on time here. Again, about two hours. We have just about 10 minutes to go until 9 p.m. So let's, uh, let's start to do our little birdies. We can concentrate on those. And then uh, I have some little Little last minute things to say, little closing announcements if you will, but again, take your time. If you're still adding certain things, branches, leaves, whatever it is, keep taking your time. I'm more than happy to repeat things uh, after we're all set here. But I'm just gonna zoom in in the meantime to my little original design here. We can see our little birds. I just wanna point out, there's not too much detail on them. So for those who are kind of scared of doing this and they're like, animals, ah, I can relate. I don't like painting animals either. They scare me, proportions are scary, getting it all right. Um, but these are very simple. I, I tried to keep them very straightforward here. So what I did is I started with their bodies 
Uh, I assume Hokey's saying egg because I use an egg shape kind of for the bodies. <laughs> Good call, Hokey. You can see they're very oval. I point them maybe a little bit at the bottom, but otherwise quite oval. So kind of two ovals for the bodies. The heads are circles that are connected, of course. Yes, you are. Very good. <laughs> circles that are connected so you can see it's not a circle laying right on top of that egg shape. It's kind of connected. So the birds are kind of snuggled in with no real necks. They're just kind of very cozy and cuddly. And then to end off, we have some kind of feathered tails here. So just by using our small brush and stroking downwards, we can do a little bit of a pointed tip at the tail and then a couple other strokes kind of coming up. And then I guess one tiny detail here is I did add a little beak to the right hand bird just to show something a little extra here as if the bird is maybe looking over, you know, the other one's looking out into the distance so we don't see a beak. But again, that's all up to you how you want to customize. They could be looking at each other. They could be not looking at each other. Maybe they're mad. I don't know. Uh, yeah, choose, choose what you like. But that's just one small detail to you. <laughs> Excuse me. Detail um, is that tiny little beak there. So I'm going to keep this zoomed in just so you can see, and then you can see the size compared to my original canvas here, or I guess my new canvas rather. So for these birds, I'm going to be using, of course, a detail brush, so just your smallest brush available so you can really take your time and shape things out and slowly color them in with paint. And as described, I'm going to start with two bodies. I like to lay both the bodies down first just so I can kind of see where they're both going, and then I'll add each uh, step to both birds one at a time here. And again, even if you're doing both birds on one side, maybe both you and your partner can do them together. Choose one bird each um, or do both yourself. Add more birds if you want, etc. But yeah, let's start here. So we're doing a nice egg shape. So it's like an oval, of course. It's like an egg is just kind of sitting on top of the branch. Perfectly balanced little egg here. And you can see I did follow my um, advice from earlier. I started a little smaller and then I said, hmm, I could use a little more room here. I could make this a little bigger. And I made the egg shape a little bigger by just kind of swirling my brush around. And the one thing I am doing is kind of pinching the bottom, maybe a little bit more. I like the idea of having the bottom a little more cinched in where the tail will be. So I'm keeping the top maybe a tiny bit wider. So it's like a disproportioned egg shape a little bit. Mostly egg, just maybe a little pinched at the bottom. <laughs> egg, egg, egg. <laughs> Don't like the lawns, that's fair. Maintenance. Tired of snow because you're taking kiddos. I see, that makes sense. Can I add a raccoon instead of lovebird single? You add whatever the heck you want. This is a great painting for that, uh, Stephanie. Just adding whatever you need. Whether it's a squirrel collecting his little nuts, whether it's a... You said raccoon? That would be really cute. A nice little black and white raccoon. Please do it. Yes. Lee's gonna do both the birds. Good luck to Lee. I'm sure he's gonna nail it. Right, I'm just gonna do a second bird over here and I'm keeping it nice and tight. I want my lovebirds to be nice and cozy. So I'm making my egg shape. You can see nice and tight, kind of just touching on, these, on the side here. Nice and cuddled up together. But again, your choice where you wanna put these. Maybe there's a little space in between them. Maybe there's more than two birds, like who knows? The whole family, whoever's special in your life. But same shape, nothing different between these two birds so far, just two cinched egg shapes. <clears throat> a live routine, hello, my sister, her daughter, and I did your Muskoka painting on YouTube this week. What a throwback! That's a beautiful one. I'm going to do another of yours in a few minutes. Too bad I missed this live. Thanks for the videos. You're always welcome alive. Thanks for coming in to say that. That means a lot. Um, this will be on YouTube soon. So if you're liking this one, you can keep watching the YouTube and you'll see this posted very soon. I'm glad you loved the Muskoka one. I assume you're from Ontario, if you know Muskoka. But maybe not. Maybe you're just like, beautiful painting. I'll paint it. Thank you so much. I love that painting too. That was like one of my first five paintings that I taught. So that's a real throwback. It's an old one, Hokey. <laughs> um, it has like an island with a nice big tree, a couple other trees. It's a very orange red kind of yellow sky with a tiny bit of blue, a very orange lake. It's very, very bright. I can find it after we're done here if you want. Very old though. All right, let's add some heads to the birds. So as I described, they're circle shapes, but they're connected to the egg. So they're not resting right on top. They're like, it's almost like the top half of the circle is showing. The bottom half is kind of connected into the body. 
So again, very cuddly, very cozy. So there's one. And there's two. So again, hope that makes sense. They're very connected. They're overlapping. I'll find your email so I can trans- Oh my goodness, Nadine, thank you. Um, I'll put all the tip information in chat again there. Oops, not tips, excuse me, tips. There we go. Uh, my email is aaronbunpaints at gmail.com. I was <laughs> serious, Aaron Bun Paints everywhere. Aaronbunpaints at gmail.com is the Interaki transfer if you prefer that. PayPal.me slash Aaron is for PayPal. And then there's a Streamlabs link for on stream tips. So thank you, Nadine. We don't have a cottage there, but Ontario still. There you go. Yep, cottage country, absolutely. Same, same. We're not in Muskoka either, but we all kind of know of it, of course. Well, I'm glad you loved it. I'm glad you can relate to it, too. That was what I was hoping as well, that people were like, ah, cottage times, you know? Bringing you back up north. All right, let's move down to the tails. Very quick and easy. I'm just going to start in the middle of the tail. I'm going to use my tiny little detail brush to stroke downwards. Just, just to start, like, exposing it from the branch here. We want to keep in mind we don't want to make it too long because the tail is probably in this big space of the branch as well so just bringing it down a little bit so that's the big middle of the tail and then I make it a little fluffier by doing a couple other brush strokes that are a little shorter kind of coming up the sides here so just brushing downwards just not quite as far down and kind of fluffing out the tail a little bit more giving a few more feathers same for the other side just coming down a couple more on either side just to fluff it out and yeah, the branches might cover up a little bit, but even an indication of the tail is still good. So even if you can't see all those little brush strokes, just filling up the space is good. At gmail.com, yes. It keyed it out for you because it's saying it as a link. I'll copy paste it again. At gmail.com, yep, that should be it. It's blocking your, your message, uh, Nadine, just because we don't allow links in chat and I think this is detecting it as a link, but yes, it's at gmail.com. It's called Paddling at Dawn. You have a Muskoka one. Oh, that's okay. Sharing my thanks. Of course, yeah, alive. Whatever you're enjoying, that's fine. I'm just glad people are painting. And uh, if you're enjoying mine, that's even better. So thanks for popping in, of course. I'd like to tip from Google Pay. What's the best way? Oh, from Google Pay? That's an interesting, interesting question, Jen. Hmm. Let me think about that after I teach this last step here, because <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no, you're fine, Nadine, you're fine. Just letting you know. All right, last little step is just adding a little beak. Again, if you want, I chose the right hand uh, bird to have a small little beak. So just using my brush, I wiped the brush on my plate to kind of line up the bristles a bit more so I can create a very thin line. And that's all the beak is. I didn't even really shape it into a triangle. I just did a very thin, little line, small indication of a beak just kind of popping out there. So if you want, you can go the extra mile. Hey, thanks for gifting us up to Jen. Wood slash forest, thank you. Can't pay pal pool. I'm honestly not sure, that's why I'm struggling. Um, Jen, uh, Hokey Mama is suggesting that you uh, use PayPal and it can communicate with the, the Google Google Pay. I'm honestly not familiar with Google Pay, so I'm having trouble. But thank you for gifting. Uh, Jen, you were just gifted a subscription from Made of Wood in chat. That means you can experience some no ad viewing. The ads are gone for you now for a whole 30 days. If you've been served any ads, you can forget it. There's no more ads that are going to be served to you because you're now subscribed on behalf of Made of Wood, so thank you. Uh, you can also use fun little emotes in chat as well. And you get a little badge by your name too to show that you're a supporter. Yeah. Cool, I can quickly Google it too when I'm uh, finished up here as well. That's what I was gonna do, honestly, was just Google it. Google about the Google Pay. <laughs> no worries, Jenna. Thank you for asking either way. Even if it doesn't work out, I just appreciate the thought too. Um, so I guess moving back to my little painting here, we're all done. That was the last step was uh, just a little beak. I'm going to zoom out of my original here just so you can see it all put together if you're still working. 
Um, but uh, yeah, if you're still painting along here, again, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to help you along with the last few steps if you need me to repeat anything. Uh, so don't hesitate to pop in the chat if you need to. Uh, but either way, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, this is one of the larger groups I've had in a while. And I just want to say I really appreciate you all tuning in live. Um, not only does it make me feel like happier knowing that everyone's painting along with me here, but it really does help me as a streamer and artist and content creator to have larger viewership, honestly, on Twitch. What happens is Twitch will recommend me to more people if I have more people here. So um, honestly, even just tuning in live, even if you're not painting, you're just hanging out, having fun, really helps me. And of course, I hope you're enjoying as you do it. So thank you for being here. It really helps. Um, for those watching on YouTube as well, thanks for watching on YouTube. That helps as well. More views is good. More exposure is good. Uh, so yeah, just participating for free is a big, big help to me uh, to grow. So thank you, everybody. Um, like I said, if you're interested in painting this, maybe you've been watching along on Twitch. I will post this to YouTube soon. I hope to get it up in the next week. Uh, so just keep your eye on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints, and uh, that should be uploaded soon. <clears throat> if you're interested in another tutorial, I will be painting this lovely um, lightning, lightning beach dark landscape painting. I know it's a little small on my screen. Maybe I can move over here. There we go. See it a little bit bigger there. I can even bring it forward. What am I doing? This will be painted um, end of March. End of March. I'll be teaching everyone step by step right here on Twitch, just like I was today. One canvas this time, beautiful purples. So that'll be end of March. If you'd like to RSVP to the Facebook event, I'll be posting that up in the next couple days so you can be reminded closer to if you like being reminded. Otherwise, just show up here. Last Sunday of March, I'll start at 7 p.m. I'll be online by six nice and early uh, so you can follow along again and paint along with us again there. Um, extra support. So a lot of people have been asking today about tipping me. Thank you for those who are asking and wanting to contribute more to me. Uh, again, I do this for free just because I want it accessible to everybody. But of course, um, I am an artist trying to make a living as well. So if you feel like tipping me or giving something a little extra, thank you so much, Hokey. Right in the chat there, there are some uh, e-transfer links for Canadians. We know e-transfers are free between banks. You can use the AaronBunPaints at gmail.com email address. Uh, I have a PayPal setup. I also have um, tips available to be um, obtained through the last link there. You can use your credit card. So lots of different options. And again, that's just the extra mile. So, you know, just being here is a, a great, great thing for me. But if you want to go the extra mile and support me financially, those are options as well. And then subscribing is an option. We've had a few gifted subs uh, today, which means people have been uh, gifting subscriptions. They're paying on behalf of others to uh, support me. I think subscribe will work maybe sub there it is um feel free to subscribe to me on twitch that also helps me as well uh twitch does get a portion of the subscription money but it does some of it does come to me and again it gives you benefits so it's not just money straight to me at least you get a little something more you get ad free viewing on twitch you get to use some fun little emotes that i've made you get a little badge by your name to show that you're a supporter of me uh so that's just another option and I'll shout out as well that you can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. That's the best. You don't even have to pay money. You can you can just subscribe for free and then you're supporting me financially. It's crazy. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, you can do that for free right now. Uh, there's instructions in the chat. I'm happy to help you out with that if you'd like to go that extra mile as well. Again, not to put too much pressure on it, just uh, something more you can do. And again, that's a free, free thing that you can do if you have Amazon Prime. Uh, so yeah, otherwise, thanks for coming, everybody. Again, check me out on other socials if you want to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Aaron Bun paints everywhere. And uh, if you're going, I hope to see you at another tutorial or you just keep painting either way. Uh, but I hope to see you at the next one. End of March. Lightning painting. Just saying bye to anyone leaving. And to YouTube, because the video is ending on YouTube. But I'm still here on Twitch. It's always a weird thing.